Men are racing to Southeast Asia. Women are going insane about the passport bros movement. The rise and manipulation of dating apps. The crazy high standards of Western women. The ugly side of dating in Asia. The difference in gender roles. And the truth behind why many men are going to find wives and girlfriends in Southeast Asia. Welcome gentlemen, we have a lot to talk about and so little time, so let's begin. What I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to make an argument, give you guys the information you need to understand what the dating life is like in Asia versus America. Uh, you guys really need to get your passport. No matter if you are American, British, Canadian, Australian, black, white, old or young, we all come together as a global alliance. So gentlemen, what is the real difference in society here? After all, there must be some reason why men are flocking to Southeast Asia. It can't just be for the ladies, or can it? But I think there's a lot more smiles happening here for plenty of other reasons. You can go where you want, when you want, do what you want, however you want. Nobody cares, man, if you're not bothering anybody else. So imagine a 50 year old western gentleman who has basically dedicated his life to hard work only to experience the setback of a divorce where his assets were divided. He feels disillusioned by the establishment and restricted by the hypersensitive nature of society where expressing one's own thoughts is met with debate. Then he discovers the allure of life in Asia, the warm and welcoming locals, the affordable cost of living and the compassionate women. He gains a newfound freedom and the ability to live life on his own terms. To answer this question, no, most guys aren't heading to Asia just for the ladies, but hey, there's no denying it's a massive bonus. Don't get me wrong, there are men out there who have had a really tough time back home and all they want to do is to kick back, relax and enjoy life without the drama of dating. And you know what? Good for them, they deserve it. But from conducting interviews, watching clips and also checking out social media, Western men are saying the following. The women are more feminine and ladylike. The women are more caring and supportive. Traditional gender roles. Traditional values. Physical attractiveness. Ugh, nobody wants to date me. I want to date you. I find you really attractive and I think that we should go out. Go away. But what about the Western women? What do they think about all of this? Over the years, there have been a lot of claims and criticism by some women, and most of the time there is backlash, and these creators end up deleting the video. But from the previous videos that we've spoken about, the top claims are Western men can't afford Western women. It's only a sexual preference. The man is weak. We all see passport bros coming your way. Remember, your dinner and drinks are equivalent to one coffee here. So order the most expensive things, tell him you want gifts, jewelry, and see how he start acting. You gonna see the real him. Tell him to pay some rent. And whatever your rent is, double it. They can afford it, okay? So, <laughs> because they have it. So last week, I got recommended this video, and let me tell you, I watched the entire three hour thing, hoping it would get better, but it didn't. The YouTuber in question claimed that most men who seek love abroad are financially insecure and can't afford American women. According to her, these quests for love overseas is just a reflection of financial difficulties. She suggested that these men focus on boosting their earnings before even thinking about pursuing Pursuing relationships. It's a shame that there are women out there who view men as nothing more than a walking ATM, always looking to exploit his financial resources. You would hope that this was an isolated incident, but if you look at the comments on that video, it's crazy to see how many people agree. I love Shara's comebacks on all these men who cannot afford a woman but want to be treated as kings. Men are supposed to provide and protect, period. Passport brothers have low standards of themselves. Good riddance. They also can't afford most women in the UK sprinkle sprinkle x love from England. However, let me set the record straight and defend the ladies here. 
In any relationship, it's critical for both men and women to contribute equally. If a man's only motive for going overseas is to find cheap women or to exploit them in some way, well, that's just plain wrong. But ladies, we need to uphold the principles of true equality, and that means fair treatment for everyone. Now, I'm all about equality, and I mean real, genuine equality. If a woman desires more in a relationship, then yeah, more power to her. However, let's not forget that relationships require a two-way street. If a woman expects more, she must also be willing to give in return. This principle holds true whether we're talking about relationships back home or overseas. If women back home are only interested in dating a man because of his money, then it's no wonder why men are seeking different options. It's not about a man being weak or poor or any of those negative labels that some people try to throw at them. In fact, it's quite the opposite, because men who recognise this situation and choose to explore other options are showing strength and a whole lot of intelligence. Men have every right to prioritise their well-being and also avoid negative relationships. It doesn't make them weak or inferior, it actually shows that they have courage to value themselves. But one thing that I've noticed is a lot of these people who call out passport bros and call out men for dating overseas are the the same people who have problems with the trad wife movement. To become a traditional wife. Number one, embracing ultra traditional gender roles into your marriage. The man, he is the provider, the main breadwinner. He goes out of the house and works. The woman, the wife, she is the homemaker. She takes care of the home. She takes care of herself and she does the cooking and the cleaning. But then there is this. We have lots of primary sources about what life was like for women in the 1950s. I don't think it's possible for women who grew up in the 21st century to really understand what it's like to be trapped inside the home. Women developed things like housewife psychosis, where they were so isolated in the home they started hallucinating and hearing voices. Women were on staggering amounts of psychotropic drugs. It wasn't uncommon for women to be locked up in psychiatric institutions for becoming psychotic like this. Many were lobotomized. Domestic violence was very normal. It was the number one reason women attended emergency rooms. And where are these men who are interested in traditionalism? Men today seem interested in hookup culture and pornography. I don't see any men lining up to pay for your whole existence. They complain about having to pay for a date before they f you. It's not gonna happen. Now hold on a minute because there's quite a few issues with this whole situation. I might not have all of the facts here but based on what I've seen from watching American YouTubers it seems like popping pills in the US has become some kind of hobby more so in fact in the modern era. Big Pharma is loving the opportunity to sell pills that promises to solve all of your problems and you know what? This modern pill popping culture isn't limited to America. It's happening in other countries too. But for the other remarks, I don't think any sensible man out there is suggesting that we go back in time to the 1950s. But here's the thing, back in those days relationships had a solid foundation. There was something significant about the way that people connected with each other. And you know what made the difference? It was the contributions, the efforts, the actions that people put into their relationships. Now as much as I go off on a rant every so often, this whole thing is not about pointing fingers or laying blame. It's about recognising the shift in how we contribute to relationships. Back then it was about building a solid foundation together, working towards a common goal and also supporting each other. But now it seems like contributions have taken a different form and not always for the better. Ladies need to reflect on what they bring to the table in a relationship. It's not just about taking, it's about giving as well. Correct me if I'm wrong gentlemen, but I believe that this is what most guys are talking about when they speak about dating back in the day. Now in regards to Southeast Asia, traditional values are still very much alive even in this day and age. Even even modern women understand the importance of give and take, and they also recognise the dynamics within the relationship. This is one of the attractive aspects of dating in Southeast Asia. Gender roles have indeed changed in the West, and as we all strive for equality, we should all be happy, right? 
Well, it's not that simple. Men are still expected to foot the bill on dates, be gentlemen, act as protectors, approach women, and all of that jazz. Modern feminism wants equality, but only when it suits them, and that's the problem. Now, there is more to this topic, such as gender feminism and the belief that women are born as victims, while men are born as oppressors. It's a big old rabbit hole that I won't dive into right now. But the good news is that there are some women out there who see through this. And Unfortunately, there is a lot of nonsense online and people just can't see the reality. What is your conception <laughs> of Western men? Handsome. <laughs> They're muscular, tall, big. They are gentlemen, they are over some. <laughs> I try and do my part to share any wisdom that I have the best way I can. As someone who has spent most of his life in Southeast Asia, I do feel it's my responsibility to share some hidden truths. Yes, it's true that there are men who go abroad to engage in, let's call it, casual pleasure. There are also men who face financial struggles and choose to live in Southeast Asia for a more affordable lifestyle. And yes, there are a few individuals who come across as slightly creepy, fitting into that stereotype. However, it's important to understand that these men only represent a very small percentage of expats and passport bros. Now here's the second truth. Asia brings a different dating experience compared to the West. In the Western dating scene, it often feels like a game where you have to carefully navigate your actions and words. However, in Southeast Asia, authenticity holds more significance. You will find that many women wear their hearts on their sleeves, and being a true gentleman can take you a very long way. Romantic gestures are highly valued by Asian women and it adds a magical touch to the dating experience which is an element that is sometimes missing in the Western world. In fact, a fellow creator, The Pinoy Life, recently released a great video titled Why Marrying a Filipina Partner is a Winning Choice. It's a great video and I've added the link below for more details. Thirdly, not all Southeast Asian women are strictly traditional. Traditional. Nevertheless, it's essential to understand that the traditional values, if there are any, are not equal to weakness or submissiveness. I say this because in the Western world, there is a growing movement where some women believe that acts like cooking for a guy or supporting him are signs of weakness or being taken advantage of. No, 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 no. It's simply about what you bring to the relationship, the contributions that you make. If you don't want to do these specific things, then that's fine, but you must contribute. Feel free to take a drink every time I say the word contribute, as you might be wrecked by the end of this video. But while we're on the subject, of contributions. Contrary to what some people may think, sex is not part of this contribution equation. It's crazy how many women claim that they are the prize and they use their body to get whatever they want. No, I've got the magic stick, I'm the bloody prize, and if I have to beat my meat for the rest of my life in order to avoid a bad relationship, don't you think that I won't? Beat your meat. It's not about how hard you can go, it's about the technique. But to be serious, there is a dark side of dating in Southeast Asia that needs to be spoken about. If you have watched my videos before, you know that I always say that people are people. No matter where she is from, there will always be potential problems. And this includes problems such as gold diggers, scams, long-term relationships, cultural acceptance, and also financial assistance. And if you've noticed, when these expats and passport bros run into these problems, the ladies back home laugh in joy as a kind of I told you so but these problems happen all over and this is why it needs to be spoken about there is no point me saying that life in Southeast Asia is 100% perfect and all the women are amazing because you'll get there you'll experience it and you'll know that it's not true one big issue which I've never heard anyone speak about on YouTube before is the cultural non-acceptance racism is very much alive in Asia Take for example Thailand, it's an absolutely beautiful country and I love the people, it's amazing. But as a foreigner, as a westerner, you will always feel like you are a foreigner, you are not a local. There is a part of society that won't like you and will look down on you or look down on your Asian partner simply because you're together. This won't be an issue in years to come due to globalization and other factors but we are still in the early days. Another downside to dating in Southeast Asia is 
is the potential financial assistance that may be expected from you. Depending on the country and its traditions, you may find yourself in a situation where you are required to financially support your partner but also her family. It's important to add that not all families thankfully have this attitude, but unfortunately there are some that do. Body, 230 pounds, average dark eyes, straight, white teeth, all 30 understands chivalry, practices, ventures, we'll try anything, sexual and compatible. Clean and tidy, well-dressed, nice shoes. I know that there are some ladies who might not agree with me on this, but it's time to address a common issue. Western women being overly selective in their dating preferences. It seems like many single ladies want a guy who's over six feet tall, flawless in every aspect, and basically a perfect gentleman. But here's a newsflash. Human beings are not perfect. We all have our own imperfections, and guess what? We have to put up with your saggy ass, so let's keep things in perspective. During my research, I stumbled upon a story that perfectly captures this selective mindset. There was a woman who froze her eggs because she believed that there was no man who currently met her expectations. Many women desire the perfect man, but the truth is, such a person doesn't exist. Even if by some chance he did exist, he would want a woman to be flawless as well, making it highly unlikely for him to settle with just anyone. It's always funny to me when I hear a single woman say, all I need is just a rich man. Yeah, but the real question is, does a rich man need you? So back in the day, dating agencies in Southeast Asia were really popular, and we even shared an amusing journey of one crazy story in our last video. However, in today's digital age, the dating landscape has undergone a significant transformation. And this is thanks to platforms such as Facebook dating, Tinder, and the like. If you're using dating apps in cities like Bangkok or Manila, you'll experience firsthand how how crazy it can get. It's not uncommon to receive 100 likes in the first few hours. The level of interest and engagement is simply off the charts. Throughout my life, I've followed one simple lesson, and that is to always stack the deck of cards in your favor no matter what. Why would I spend my single life swiping away in London when I have the opportunity to connect with amazing single ladies in Southeast Asia? The question of where Western men are finding girlfriends and wives is an intriguing one considering the vastness of Southeast Asia and the varying traditions across the different countries. To be honest, numerous countries in Southeast Asia offer opportunities for Western singles. However, some countries have gained more attention than others in this regard. The Philippines is swiftly emerging as one of the most popular destinations for Westerners seeking partners. The cultural beliefs and values in the Philippines share many similarities with with Western countries. Moreover, the widespread use of English and the warm-hearted nature of the people make it a hotspot for international love seekers. Thailand and Vietnam are also great options, but there are notable differences in the dating scene compared to the Philippines, which is why the Philippines has a tendency to attract more expats who are seeking a serious relationship. Other countries worth considering include Cambodia, Laos, Indonesia, and so on. However, these places have limited dating dating information available due to factors such as legal matters, cultural differences, and limited usage of dating platforms. But let's not forget that it's not only Western men who are leaving their home country to find a spouse. Chinese, Japanese, and Korean singletons are also exploring the dating scene all across Southeast Asia. I understand that not every Western woman has a problem with these dating dynamics, and I also acknowledge that not every Asian woman is honest and decent. However, at this moment in time, dating in Southeast Asia seems to be a much better experience for men. Put it this way, it's extremely rare to come across a story where a man decides to return home for dating purposes. I firmly believe in fairness and equality, and I would defend women just as much as men on any subject. However, when it comes to dating in the modern Western world, men often face so many challenges. Yes, women have their own problems too, but society tends to provide them with more support and defense. Frankly, if we remove sex from the equation, there isn't much a man 
Shang can't do for himself. If he is expected to take care of the household chores, pay the bills, handle DIY projects and fulfill his own emotional needs, it begs the question, why does he need a partner? Now let's shift our focus on Southeast Asia. In this context, Westerners often find a sense of freedom. There is no constant nagging and you can truly unwind. Their Southeast Asian partner contributes to the relationship in a way that makes it feel more like a partnership. And as we all know, this works both ways. A man cannot be a loser either at home or in Asia. If he wants to be treated like a king, he also needs to treat his partner like a queen. 